In this video, I'll show you how you can add a webhook handler to your checkout integration so that you'll know whenever customers have completed that checkout process, and you can go ahead and kick off your fulfillment workflow. Now, we'll be building on top of code that was generated from the Stripe integration builder. And Stripe also provides pre-built webhook handler code that we will be making use of also. If you want to learn more about some of the things that we're going to show in this video, make sure you check out some of the links in this video's description. Let's take a look at our code so far. Inside of our controller, you should see our route for create checkout session. Inside here, we're going to create a new instance of a session object. And that object is going to have a property called URL. We're going to use that URL property to redirect the customer over to the Stripe hosted checkout page. There, they'll be able to add their payment details and submit their order. Then they're going to be redirected back over to the success URL that we specified inside of that checkout object. Now, let's see how we can create a webhook handler inside of our controller. As we scroll down a little bit, you should see that I have an action method called webhook handler, and it's going to respond to post requests on the slash webhook endpoint. Inside of the action method, we're going to read the body of the request, log it to the console, and then we're going to return an OK status result. It's important that we return successful responses back from our webhook handlers for a few reasons. One, whenever you're handling the checkout session completed event, Stripe's going to delay redirecting the user until it gets that response back. So if you take a while before you return a response back from your webhook handler, then Stripe's going to take a little while before they redirect the customer over, which might be a little bit annoying for them. Also, as we're receiving other events from Stripe, it's going to look out for various status codes and responses back from our integration. And if it doesn't receive a status code or it doesn't receive a response, then it's going to retry sending those events to our endpoint. So unless you send a response back, Stripe is going to continually send traffic over to our application, which you may or may not want. Now, I want to be able to test my integration that's on my machine. So to do that, I'm going to make use of the Stripe CLI. So as events happen in Stripe, the Stripe CLI is going to allow me to capture some of those events and forward them onto my local machine where I can test on my integration right here. If you don't have the Stripe CLI installed on your machine, well, make sure you check out the links in the description of this video to see how you can get it installed. Once you have the Stripe CLI installed on your machine, you should be able to start using it on the command line. Here you can see I issued that Stripe status command, and that allows us to know everything is up and running. Next, I'm going to issue a Stripe listen command, and this is going to forward any events that happen inside of my Stripe account over to my local server that's running on port 4242. Also, I want you to see that it's also returned to us a webhook signing secret. I'm going to copy this for now and paste it over into my application. Here inside of my controller, I'm going to save this webhook signing secret inside of a variable. Now, in production, you probably want to store this inside of a configuration file or something like that. Next, I'm going to go ahead and run my application. So I'm going to issue a .NET run command and start my app running. Now that I'm up and running on port 4242, let's head over to the browser and see what this looks like. Now my application is up and running, I'm going to go ahead and go through the regular checkout flow. Now that I've submitted the form, I'm expected to get redirected back to that success page. Now let's head back over to the command line and see what's been output. As you can see, that Stripe listen command has been showing us all of the various events that have been triggered inside of our Stripe account. And not only that, it's been forwarding those events over to that local host at port 4242, where our webhook handler is listening for those various events. Now, for the sake of this particular video, we're really just going to be focused on the checkout session completed event. Let's head back over to Visual Studio and see what our code has been doing. Here in Visual Studio Code, I'm just going to expand this terminal a little bit. Now, if you recall, we were actually logging out the event out to the console. And as you can see here, here's that JSON that came from the request body from those different events that were fired. So as you can see, we can get information about what's actually happening here. Now, we're going to move forward and start using some of this information inside of this checkout request. Now, before we go forward, there is a concern that we need to address. So far, we've been able to confirm that our webhook handle is able to receive requests and process them. But as it is right now, it's not very secure. Anyone can send an HTTP post request to that endpoint. We need to verify that those requests are actually coming in from Stripe. Luckily, the client SDKs have built-in support for that. If we head over to the Stripe SDK, we can go to the developer section. And then we'll go to webhooks. And then now, we'll be able to make use of some of the pre-built webhook handler code that's here. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy some of this code and I'm going to paste it inside of my action method inside of Visual Studio Code. Here in Visual Studio Code, I'm going to drop in that code that we just copied. Now what it's doing here is reading the body of the request and then it's going to compare the body with the signature that's inside of the header with our webhook handler secret that we saved earlier. If you remember, we saved this in a variable called webhook secret. Now, if the verification is successful, well, the rest of our code will just continue to execute. And we'll also have a Stripe event that we can actually start working with. But if it's not successful, it's going to throw an exception and instead it's going to return a bad request to the client. So let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. So I'm going to do .NET run. Now let's head over to the command line and issue a request. What I'm going to do is issue a curl request. And this is going to send over some fake data with a fake signature over to that endpoint. And as you can see, it's returning a 400 bad request. So that means our code was able to look at the request and see, well, this did not come from Stripe. So I'm not going to allow it to continue to run. Let's see what happens if we want to trigger an actual event. Now, we can go through the regular workflow through the website, or we can actually trigger an event using the Stripe CLI. So here I'm going to type in Stripe trigger and then check out that session I completed as the event that I wanted to trigger. And that's going to go ahead and send a bunch of messages over to my webhook handler. Notice at the bottom it says trigger succeeded. Let's head back over to Visual Studio Code to take a look at our code. If we take a look at the console inside of Visual Studio Code, we should see that it was able to handle a lot of these requests successfully. Now that we know that we're able to verify and process these requests, let's start to tweak our code a little bit. Now, for instance, since we're in a checkout session, I want to handle the checkout session completed event instead. And I also want to be able to get access to the raw checkout object. So what I could do is I can go to Stripe checkout event, data object, and now I'm going to cast that as a type of checkout session. And now I'm going to store this in a variable here. But what this now means is that I have the ability to use that session to get information about all of the different things that are a part of that user checkout session. And I can use that to go ahead and fulfill my order. Let's review what we've done so far for this basic webhook handler. We created an endpoint to receive events from Stripe and used the Stripe CLI to forward events to our local server so we could test our code. When we go live with our app, we'll set a webhook endpoint in our dashboard to our production URL for this route. In our code, we verified the event came from Stripe by calling the construct event method with the event payload, the Stripe signature header, and our webhook secret. Lastly, we checked the type of event, and if it was checkout session completed, we extracted the session object so we can use it to kick off our fulfillment workflow. Now, there are a few additional events that you want to listen for whenever you're handling payment methods with delayed notifications. If we look at the checkout session object that we just printed out, you can see that there's a payment status field. And this is set to paid in this example because the purchase was made using a card and cards immediately return a payment status whenever the transaction is completed. However, there are a few payment methods where the funds won't be immediately available after the customer completes checkout. And in those instances, you want to delay fulfilling the order until you've gotten a notification that the payments have been successful. Some of these include things like Box Direct Debit, SEPA Direct Debit, ACH Direct Debit, OXO, Boleto, and a few others. To make sure that we're only fulfilling orders that have actually been paid, there's a few changes that we still want to make to our code. First, inside of that checkout session completed event, I want to look at that session object that we retrieved, and I want to look at its status property. If that's set to paid, then I know it's safe for us to go ahead and kick off any fulfillment workflow that we have set up inside of our code. Next, to handle any delayed payment methods, we want to check for a few other events. First, I want to check for the checkout session async payment succeeded event. And similar to what we did before, I want to retrieve that session object, and then I want to go ahead and kick off our fulfillment workflow. The last event that we want to check for is going to be the checkout session async payment failed. And instead of actually fulfilling the order, what we'll do here is we'll handle the failure. And we might want to kick off any alternative workflow that we might have to resolve this issue. Now, let's head over to the dashboard really quickly. To actually enable deferred payment methods, we can go to settings and under payment methods, we can enable something like ACH direct debit or even SEPA direct debit. I'll go ahead and turn on ACH direct debit. Now let's go ahead and try out our integration. First, I'm going to go ahead and run my .NET command. 
Now, once my server is up and running, it should be available in port 4242. Next, we'll go to the command line and we'll execute that Stripe listen command. And this is going to forward those Stripe events over to our locally running server. Now in the browser, let's try out our integration. This time, we're going to use a deferred payment method. So I'll go ahead and fill out the form just like we have before. But this time, instead of selecting card, I'm going to go ahead and select US bank account. Now, luckily, Stripe has that test institution button that's here. That's really useful. So what it'll do is load up some test accounts that we can use to try out this integration. As you can see here, there are accounts that are closed, that have a failure response, insufficient funds response, debit not authorized response, and also successful payment response. I'm going to try the successful payment one. I'll click link account, and now I should be able to go ahead and hit that payment button. What I'm expecting to happen is that we should get redirected to the success page, just like we always have. But now I should be able to see that we got that checkout session async payment succeeded event. Let's head back over to the command line. Here in the command terminal, you should see our various events like checkout session completed. We should see payment intent succeeded. And then after a while, you should also see checkout session async payment succeeded as well. Now let's try out a failure event. Back in the browser, I'm going to go ahead and run through that workflow again. So I'm going to fill out the form. I'm going to select US bank account, put in my name, and I'm going to click test institution again. This time, instead of selecting a successful one, I'm going to select failure. I'm going to link the account, and now I'm going to execute the payment. Now, just like before, I'm going to get redirected back to that success page. But remember, success in this case doesn't mean that the payment was successful. It just means that we successfully went through the checkout process. Now, that deferred payment method is going to let us know asynchronously whether the payment was successful or not. In this case, since we used a failed card, we should get a failed response. And there you have it. After a few moments, you should see that checkout session async payment failed event fired, and it was sent over to a webhook handler. And now you can kick off whatever alternative workflow you have to resolve that issue. By adding support for these additional events, our webhook handler is now able to support the cases when the funds are either immediately available or in the cases where it may take a few days for them to process. If you're interested in learning more about Stripe Checkout, make sure you check out the links in the description below.